Okay, so the environment that we train in, as we said, is something that we need to generalize and we need to proof our dogs in different environments. So, like we've been talking about, we start all of our training in our distraction-free environment. So for us, we've got our training center here. For you, maybe your garage, your basement, your backyard, wherever it is that you do the majority of your training. However, if you take that training from your backyard to your front yard or your front yard to the park or wherever it is, there's going to be a lot of environmental distractions. So we need to slowly and incrementally do that. And I'm just gonna show you a quick demonstration where we'll do a couple of little obedience things with Sonny here. Then we're going to go outside and we'll do the same thing outside. And then we're gonna go out by our dock diving pool. So our dock diving pool is the biggest distraction we can ever put on Sonny. And you'll see how in here in the training lab, he's perfect. You get him out by that pool, he doesn't really want to listen to any obedience commands. All he wants to do is get up in the pool and start swimming. So that is something that I would need to work on slowly and incrementally doing my obedience closer and closer to the pool than doing obedience around the pool before he's ever even allowed to go swimming, those types of things. The gist is it's really dog dependent, but the more environments that you can bring your dog into, the more environments are gonna generalize and the better proofed that will behavior will be but don't expect your dog to sit in your basement where you do all your training, and then you go to the coffee shop and ask your dog to sit, and your dog could care less about what you're doing, because sit means nothing to them anymore, because now there's all these crazy smells in the bakery and people everywhere, and they are going crazy and they don't know what to do. So slowly and incrementally increase the difficulty of your environment, and we'll just show you a quick example of, how, of a more severe example of this. Free. Sit. Yes. Sit. Down. Sit. Stand. Yes. Place. Ooh. No. Place. Yes. Sunny side. So I'm gonna do a little bit of healing with Sonny, even though that's not something we're gonna be working on in this course, but it'll be a really simple way for you to see a clear picture of the differences in different environments. So you can see in here, it doesn't take much for me to have Sonny in a perfect focused heel. He'll walk staring at me the entire time. He's anticipating his reward. He stops when I stop, he pivots. Yes. I rewarded him there for looking back at me. We'll put him back in quick. Sonny, come here. Side. Yes. Oh, good boy. <laughs> oh, you dropped that one, huh? All right, so now we'll go outside and we'll do a little bit of the same type of training outside and you'll see how the environment affects that. Yes. Okay, so now we brought Sonny outside. We're just gonna show you how the environment changes up his demeanor and changes how our training's going to go. So we want him to generalize those behaviors that we trained in our lab. So Sonny, come here. Sun, sun. Sit. Yes. So it's gonna be our same training. Sit. Yes. But you'll notice, like a lot of our other stuff, I'm gonna take two, two steps back and one step forward. So, as we said, the physical gesture, the lure, is easier for our dog to see than hearing the verbal command. So I may put my lure back in. Sonny, down. Well, you listen there. But you'll see when we get over by the pool, good. If I give him a down command, he may not do it. I'm not gonna worry about that because we're adding in distractions. What I'm going to do is put my lure back into the picture and simplify it for him. What I'm also going to do outside and when we add in more and more distractions is speed up the pace of my training. So if I ask Sonny to do a bunch of sits or a bunch of downs and fast repetition, I'm gonna keep him engaged with me and not give him the opportunity to check out. So we'll show you what that'll look like. Sonny, come here. Hey buddy, sit. Yes. Oh, good boy. Sit. Good. Good. Down. Good. Yes. Down. 
Yes. Down. Yes. Down. Yes. Down. Yes. Sit. Yes. Place. Yes. All done. So you notice there, I went a little bit faster. I didn't take any breaks. I kept everything exciting and engaging with him. You also notice that I have a leash on my dog. So when we're inside the training lab, I'm not overly concerned with it. It's a controlled environment. Sonny's not going to be able to break and run away. Not that he's going to run away, but run around and explore the environment. However, we're outside. We're outside the back of our building here in the tech park. There's cars driving by on the street. There's other people. Positive control of your dog is important. All right, now we're gonna go over by the swimming pool, which is Sonny's biggest distraction on the planet. He loves that thing. And you'll see how he probably won't do any of those, these obedience exercises for me over there. So this is going to be a place where I need to slowly and incrementally do some obedience training 100 yards from the pool, then 75 yards from the pool, then 50 yards from the pool, then do a ton of stuff right around the pool. For Sonny, it's the pool. For you and your dog, it may be the coffee shop or it may be the playground on the street. Whatever it is, you need to figure out what those distractions are for your dog and figure out how you can slowly and incrementally add those into your training. All right, so now here we are. We're out by the pool. So we're gonna attempt to do a little bit of an obedience session right here next to the pool. This is too much for Sonny. This is an environment that, as I said, I need to work on slowly and incrementally getting him used to doing obedience by the pool. I should be doing a ton of engagement out here. I should be making really short, exciting training exercises for him, but we're just gonna use it as a demonstration. Sonny, come. Yes. Sit. Yes. Sit. Yes. Sonny, no. Sonny, sit, sit, yes. Sonny, down, yes. Hey, Sonny, Sonny, yuck. So you notice he's not into this right now. He doesn't really want to train. He wants to get on that pool. This is an environment that I shouldn't be training in yet. Sonny, come here. He's gonna pee on stuff because there's other dogs out here. I've got treats in my hand right now. He's not even following a lure. <laughs> He's shying away from the food because he wants to go to the pool. So I only did this to show you an example of an environment that is too hard to train right now. I should be doing more training exercises back over there in the backyard, outside of the fence from the pool, not all the way in here this close. And I should build up my proofing of my behaviors before I come out and train in an environment like this. And as I said, this level of distraction is going to be different for every dog. So we keep referring back to the main things or the same things, but it may be the coffee shop, it may be the park, it may be the children in the park, whatever it is, you need to figure out your own dog and how you can incrementally increase the level of distraction and increase the difficulty in your environment for where you're training. If you train in enough different environments and slowly and incrementally increase the difficulty of distraction, you will develop a dog that will behave perfectly in any environment. But if you only train in your training lab, you're gonna come out in the real world and wonder why your dog suddenly doesn't listen when in the training lab, they look like a obedience master. So just uh, some food for thought about setting up your training and where to go once you have these behaviors taught in your distraction-free environment.